Hello and welcome to Petra Publications. Davis here, and today I wanted to do a quick review, or more in-depth review. I did an unboxing view, uh, video about um, a month ago, and I want to do a more in-depth review of this uh, ESV Reader's Bible, the six-volume edition. This is the um, non-numbered edition without the numbers for the verses uh, and the chapters, and this is in cowhide. And I ordered mine from evangelicalbible.com, and I'll link them in the description. And like every other evangelical Bible order, you're going to get their card, which gives their mission, um, the different uh, countries that you can buy these in, um, and their mission there to the different countries, as well as a signed invoice. So I love the signed invoice idea. It's very personal. I like that. It's good. Now this set, first thing you'll notice is that it comes with this beautiful box. It's got this uh, beautiful uh, gold um, logo with all the different... I don't even know what you'd call that. I guess it is a logo, but it's it's really cool. I love the, uh, the detail on that. And other than that, it's just a, a black box. Inside it's just your regular pale cardboard. Also, when you open it up, it's... This is behind the books to kind of protect them, um, which was another great idea that they did. But that is the box that you receive with the set. And then the set also comes with this uh, this little booklet. Um, I've heard some people joke around and say that you know that a set is nice and the Bible is nice when it comes with a booklet. And it says on the back that the Word of God might be treasured for a lifetime. Crossway on the bottom. And then again, that really cool gold logo on the front of that cover. Now it comes with this just lovely uh, walnut case, slip case, and that walnut slip case, it, it really will last. Um, it'll last longer than a lifetime. But um, let me let me just read a little bit of this, and I'm sure that there are a million videos of this on YouTube, so fast forward if this is not uh, helpful to you, but I did just want to get this in here. Um, <clears throat> the first page gives the vision uh, and it says, Vision, the Bible is the greatest earthly treasure that God has ever tr entrusted to his people. The purpose of the ESV Reader's Bible six-volume set is to present the Bible text, biblical text, in a way that facilitates smoothness of reading and deeper engagement with God's Word for the joy of God's people. To that end, chapter and verse numbers, footnotes, and most section headings have been removed in an effort to immerse the readers in the sweep of the Bible's overreaching, overarching sorry, storyline manufactured in Italy with the highest quality materials and craftsmanship. This unique edition reflects the unspeakable preciousness and beauty of the scripture itself. Um, and so, obviously, I had heard that or read it before I bought it, and uh, that really did influence me to go ahead and buy it. I wanted it to last. I wanted to, um, I wanted to be able to give it to my children, to my grandchildren, so on and so forth, um, something that would last. And, of course, regular Bibles will last. Thin lines, wide margins, study Bibles, they will last. But this is something so unique and so different from everything else that I wanted to have it to give it to them. Next page, it gives the typeface. Um, it is in a 12-point font, which is massive for a Bible, which is how they were able to fill up six volumes worth. Talks about the paper with 80 GSM. This is my new ESV Crossway Legacy Wide Margin Everything fantastic and i'm going to do a review of that but for reference this is a 28 gsm so your wide margin bible is uh, 28 this is an 80 gsm that is some thick paper it's a uh, munkin premium cream uncoated paper it is the softest silkiest paper that you're going to feel ever possibly it is so smooth and soft and it's it's not a bleached white it's just a creamy very nice looking paper, one that you can look at for hours without feeling anything uh, draining in your eyes from the strain of looking at it. such white paper. It's really fantastic. Next page in this is the leather. It talks about 
Um, now obviously, it's cowhide, but um, talks about how it's carefully processed in a sustainable low uh, low waste facility where it is first uh, limed, cleaned, and trimmed before getting tanned, shaved, retanned, dyed, dried, and then buffed. And then finally, every piece of leather is measured and uh, meticulously inspected by hand. Um, that happens in Italy, and it is top grain Costa Rica Lux cowhide leather. And this is really fantastic leather. I've done a review of the ESV um, Thinline Bible that I will link in the description. This is the exact same leather as on that Bible. So really soft, really um, just really nice leather. The next page it talks about the slipcase. I've already talked about that a little bit, but um, the slipcase is handcrafted by Amish craftsmen in uh, northern Indiana out of rich black walnut harvested from sustainable forests in the eastern United States. Um, it is uh, The wood hardness is uh, 1,010 pounds. I don't necessarily know what that means, but I can tell you that that is some hard wood. Um, just a fantastic slipcase. I don't know. Really, you could not have a nicer slipcase than this. Every slipcase I've ever seen has been... You know, maybe a high-quality cardboard, but cardboard nonetheless. This is just, it's beautiful to look at. Um, it's pleasing to the eye, but it's also extremely durable um, and will last forever. And then it, <clears throat> the next page talks about the printer. This was in Lego. Not the toy, but Lego the printer. And um, it's founded uh, as a Bible. Um and book bindery and still operates today as a fifth generation family business which is just amazing but uh, they specialize in thin bible paper uh, using materials of the finest quality to create beautiful timeless editions and that is exactly what we have here um, they were founded in 1900 still printing today and then the last page here is production uh, the binding and covering process takes place within a climate-controlled facility in order to prevent warping. Each signature of the, of pages is sewn together uh, with just the right amount of thread tension to achieve ideal spine flexibility. Finally, cold setting glue is used for maximum lay-flat properties. And I'll put um, videos in so that you can see all those things. Um, and... Before I actually show the Bible real quick, I wanted to um, uh, and talk about a few things about it. Um, I wanted to say how great Evangelical Bible is. I've now done two uh, purchases with them. Their shipping is fantastic, um, very fast. They get things, um, <clears throat> they get, you know, if you order, they're going to process your order within the, the day, if you order early enough in the day or the very next day, uh, early in the morning. Very quick. Very um, just punctual, and I love that about them. Um, great customer service. Uh, volume 4, again, I'll put a video of that in so you can see what I'm talking about. When I was inspecting all of these, I noticed a little bit of um, detachment from the top uh, ribbon on top. If that's what you call it, the ribbon, I think. A um, little bit of t detachment from the text block. Didn't really like that, so I emailed them and just said, hey, there's this. I sent them a picture of it. Um, is this something I should be concerned about? Should I send it back? Would you let me do that? Um, again, very punctual. Uh, within a day or two, I received an email that just said, yes, if you want to send back volume four, please feel free to do so. It doesn't, um, this issue is, you know, kind of common. It happens a, a good bit and it's not a huge issue. It won't affect the longevity of the book, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and then she said, if I wanted to, if I felt comfortable doing it, I could put uh, glue on it myself using a toothpick, to which I said, thank you very much, you know, uh, wouldn't need to send it back if you don't think it's going to affect the book itself. I don't know that much about how books are put together. I'm going to start studying that, though. I think that's really cool, but um, don't really need to worry about that if, it's, if you're saying it's not anything I need to worry about. Um, we'll just call it good. But they did. They, they responded quickly, um, gave me a couple different options as to how I could fix the problem. And again, really do love that. Um, and they've been that way for both of my uh, purchases with them. 
So highly recommend Evangelical Bible. Again, link in the description. And um, so what do I think? Again, I, I say this every time uh, I make one of these, but I have no authority here. This is just my opinion. Nobody needs to listen to it. It is just me talking. But um, what do I think of this Bible set? I have been using it for a month now, and uh, I absolutely love it. Um, I've read through this one, and I've read um, several, well, not quite 200 pages in, in this one. But you can see just how large the text really is, how easy it is to read, um, just how how it lays flat every page you turn. You're not going to have any issues with it closing up on you or uh, anything like that. You Just the ease of reading. The poetry section, um, paragraph form still, so it's very, uh, or it's uh, not paragraph form, what's the other thing called? It's the poetry um, the way of poetry, I, don't, I can't remember, but point being, um, again, just so readable, uh, and at my church every week we read the Psalms, and if I were ever asked to, uh, read one of the Psalms, I would take this with me and read it from this Bible instead of really anything else, because the text is so large, 12-point font, um, just so readable, so usable, um, and yeah, so I, I do absolutely adore this set, and it sits over there, and I see it every day as I study the Word of God. And I use it every day to study the Word of God. Uh, what is a concern that I have with this set? Um, there are a couple concerns. Um, well, I guess actually only one main one, but uh, that is as you're reading this without the numbers, it's so easy to read. It's amazing. It's phenomenal. I'm not dissing that idea at all. Obviously, the numbers are not the Word of God. The text is the Word of God. But here's an issue that I see with this, and I've even noticed it um, as I'm studying from these and not a numbered Bible. Um, and that is, you don't know where you are. Um, you can't pull things back. You can say, well, I know it's in this book, but I don't know where. I don't know what chapter and what verse. Whereas if you study, like I was showing earlier in my new wide margin, it's going to be much easier to say, yeah, it's in that chapter, it's in that verse, so on and so forth. Whereas here, you have nothing to base it on, unless if you um, look it up in a different Bible that is numbered, and at that point, uh, you know, why do you... <laughs> you're, you're defeating the point of reading it without numbers. Um so I think that's the main and only concern I think that I have with reading a Bible without the numbers is in apologetics, in evangelism, and just everyday um, uh, you know encouragement to brothers and fellow believers. It's it's uh, it's almost crucial that you know where you're citing, where where you're quoting from, and you just wouldn't know if this is all you have, if that's all you're spending your time in and reading and studying. You're not going to know. Um, same thing for sermon or lesson prep. If a pastor or a teacher is, or even a father uh, who's leading his family in worship is using this, again, great for presenting it. If you, you know, bookmarked your, your spot or you've got ribbons in this set as well that, that, uh, that help you with that. But if you were going to read from it, that's great. But I don't think you should study from it because you're just not going to be able to say, you know, we're going to study from John 20. Romans 8, uh, Ephesians 4, um, you know, th just John 3. You know, I know what are in those things because I've studied Bibles that have numbers, not ones without them. Um, and so that's the only concern. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I'm probably making something out of nothing. If I am, completely ignore that. But I just, I just wanted to point that out. If you were looking to buy this and you were thinking of making this your primary reading and your primary studying Bible, I would say kind of steer away from that. There are some other things, especially with the kind of money that you're spending, there are some other things for that use that you might be better off to buy. Um, but as far as the Bible, if you're just reading it, if you're using it to uh, read out loud to your family, to your church, to your class, whatever it is, um, to yourself even at times, uh, this really is a fantastic Bible. And um, since I bought it for the primary use of my children that I don't have yet, and Lord willing, I will, by the grace of God, uh, and uh, grandchildren, again, 
only by the grace of God. Yeah, I, I'm very pleased, very pleased with this. Um, would recommend, would buy, uh, if if the the finances are there. And I I bought this with money that has been given to me uh, by friends and family, by their love and their care for me. So great investment. Um, it'll last your lifetime, your children's lifetime, if it's preserved and taken care of. Um, really great stuff. There will be links to everything down below. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful Lord's Day and continue to do so. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And Lord willing, I will see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.